Good morning and welcome back to Hajang day three. Today is our longest day out of the three, the two days that we've done so far. It's 160 kilometers that we have to cover from where we are now to the end point back in Hajang. So it's going to be a really long day for us and we got a lot of stops planned, but not a lot of time. So hopefully we'll get everything covered and we'll see everything that we want to before we go back to Hajang. So stay along with us. Hi guys, we're joining you actually the day after our Hajang Loop adventure. The last day, our day three, was really, really rushed and bad, so we didn't film that much. We got led on a bit of a wild goose chase. So we started the day with breakfast as normal. We went to a local market. Oh, that was fantastic. The market was lovely. Yeah, there was no white people there at all, which is very <laughs> strange. Um, and there was a lot going on, a lot of animals, basically anything, everything you could imagine. Like a live, a livestock of like cats, pigs, chickens. Goats. Like just being sold everywhere, which was so cool to see and like crazy for us because it's just <laughs> nothing like what happens at home. So it was a really interesting market mm -hmm. to go visit. And then we had another buncha for breakfast. This buncha was better than the day, day two. One. Yeah, it's, it was day two. Oh, day two, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, day two's breakfast a lot more flavour, a lot less salt, um, and it just made us love Buncha even more. So that was that was unbelievable. <laughs> of course we had coffee. We've had um, a Vietnamese brown coffee, which is coffee and condensed milk, and we just were obsessed. It's incredible. And then after the market and breakfast, we started the long journey back to Hajang. So before we started the day, our guide said, we've got 160 kilometres to cover today which is already like a lot of kilometers. Like that's a lot of distance <laughs> to do sat on the back of a motorbike in one day. Bearing in mind on day one, we had 60 kilometers. And on day two, we ha we also had- 100? Yeah, I think it was even less, okay. almost like 80 kilometers. So this was double what we had done before. And he goes, it's okay. Cause um, the other driver who was with us knows a shortcut that will like cut some kilometers off. So we sat off in the morning and like, we stopped a couple of times in the first two hours and we could tell like something was a bit off. And then at the third stop, I want to say, um, like the main guide said to us, we've basically like been going in the wrong direction for an hour. And what has what should have taken us an hour has taken us two because we had to correct the, the hour that we went wrong. So we're like an hour minimum. It was a minimum mm -hmm. of an hour behind schedule already. Um, we've traveled about 70 kilometers we've only made about like 30 kilometers progress towards Hajan. And by this point, like obviously already like two hours of the day gone, we'd spent all that time at the market, we spent all that time having breakfast, thinking that we had enough time to get to Hajan by the time our bus was meant to leave at four o'clock. So at this point, uh, it's basically said that the only way for us to get to Hajang to collect our bus at four o'clock is basically just to go straight there. Like we need to cover essentially like 130 kilometers. So doing 200 kilometers in one day, 130 kilometers all before four o'clock. Without any stops, without lunch, without practically anything. Yeah, like we braked for like a few minutes just mm -hmm. to like step off the bike and move. Anyway, so it gets to oh, like three o'clock mm -hmm. and we're en route, we're, we're, we're making good progress. And then the road straight to Hajang has had a landslide. It's completely blocked. So the only other option is to go a detour. And obviously this is just adding on more distance, more time on the bike. So we're doing over 200 kilometers and we just didn't have the time. And like, there's just no way we're making our four o'clock bus at that point. So that's just written off. So we contact um, us and the guide, contact the company who we arranged it all through and say, this is the situation. We're not making the four o'clock bus. What are the options? So at this time we are moved onto a five o'clock bus. Now, originally the four o'clock was meant to get us into Hanoi, back to Hanoi, back to our hotel at 10 o'clock. <laughs> so we're about to come to five o'clock thinking it's only an hour later. Like it's, that'll be fine. You know, it'll be, presumably an hour later into Hanoi, you know, give or take half an hour. And after rushing back to Hanoi, we did end up having lunch now because we had that extra tolerance built in. So we had a, we had a stop for lunch. Um, the bus is pretty late. So it was already like over half an hour late mm -hmm. to pick us up from Hajan. We're like, it's okay, it's only half an hour, it's whatever. And then we get on this bus and the bus is set up like a night bus. Mm -hmm. It was really confusing. There were no seats only beds and we obviously we're getting on this bus at half past five 
So we're really confused as to like what they're expecting us to do and how they're expecting us to sit on a night bus at half past five. And now a whole other set of drama starts because we're, so we're left on the bus. Now we're not, we're by ourselves, we're with no guides, no one who speaks obviously Vietnamese. And we just, we're like, it's really strange that it's like set up with beds. It's set up like a night bus. Like why, why is it like this? So we go to the driver with Google Translate and we say, uh, just, just so we know, what time is this bus getting into Hanoi Old Quarter where our hotel is? And he says 6.30 a.m. <laughs> At this point, we're panicking. Yeah. And Proper we, meltdown. We, we double check this with him. It's 6.30 a.m. in the morning, like just 12 hours. <laughs> and he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's getting at 6.30 a.m. So we're like, oh, okay. We were not prepared for a night bus at all. Like we hadn't showered. We stank. We'd been traveling over 200 kilometers on the back of a motorbike all day. Um, we'd, we hadn't really had dinner. We'd had a really late lunch. So like we weren't overly hungry. Um, but still, we have very little water left. And then we're being told, we've got 12 hours on this bus, no loo, no sink, no nothing. Um, and we start, to, we start to panic, really. So I called the guide, we got off the bus, I called the guide, and the guide said that they'll pick us up and take us back to their- Hotel. Their hotel, yeah. And arrange a bus for us in the morning to go back to Hanoi, which is obviously a little bit problematic because we have the hotel in Hanoi booked, uh, presumably we'd have to have paid for that. Um, and we're gonna have to be picked up from this bus. So we get off the bus and we go outside. And at this point, we're lucky enough to run into another English speaking couple with a Vietnamese guide. And we say, we like, they're like, oh, like, are you guys okay? Like what's going on, what's happened? And we explain to them exactly what we just said to you. And they're like, oh, oh, okay. Like we thought this bus would get into Hanoi at like, 12 31 o'clock and we're like oh really like that that would that would be okay whilst that's that's late and but that's kind of you know what you'd expect from a bus leaving at this sort of time so we're like okay if that's if that's the case why is the driver saying 6 30 a.m and then we ask their guide their vietnamese guide and they converse the driver and the guide and it gets back to us no no it's it's not getting at 6 30 a.m it, it is getting in at you know 12 1 a.m in the morning so obviously at that point, we get back on the bus and we carry on with the journey. So it was an unnecessary stress really. And the bus took so long to get back to Hanoi. We ended up getting back here at about 2 a.m. Um, and it was a very, very, very long day. It was a very long bus after over 200 kilometers on the back of a motorbike. And it doesn't spoil how incredible the Ha Chang Loop was for us. Like such an unbelievable experience. It doesn't spoil that at all. It really doesn't like we had a fantastic guide we had an amazing time we were on a private tour it was just us and the guides and they were they were amazing they were so helpful um it was an unbelievable few days and we wouldn't change it for the world but it was just a stressful and intense <laughs> last 24 hours that just sort of like left us exhausted and just wiped out so that kind of <laughs> brings us to the end of our hajang loop story um we would 100% mm -hmm. recommend it to, uh, despite everything I've just said, we would 100% recommend the experience to anybody coming to Vietnam, especially North Vietnam. It's one of the most beautiful places we've ever seen in our entire lives. And it's such a unique experience. You, you have to do it if you're coming to Southeast Asia, absolutely no questions. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please give it a like um, and please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, if you'd like to see more from us. Hopefully we'll see you on the next video. We've got a couple of days exploring Hanoi, a bit of some downtime. Um, and yeah, hopefully you'll last de-stress after that last day. But hopefully we'll see you in the next video.